Good morning, everyone, and welcome to what new in AutoCAD 2024. In this session, we're not just going to be looking at AutoCAD, we're going to be looking at uh, LT and uh, all of the tool sets or the vertical products as well. Okay, um, you may be aware we've been going through a few name changes over the last couple of years. We're still A2K Technologies, but uh, we're part of the Fin Zero Group, which is an Arcance company. And basically, you know, we're here to help you. We're not just selling uh, software, um, we're selling solutions in, in regards to consulting, training, development, and managed services. So um, basically, if you're trying to take your CAD products or your BIM products beyond just the standard, you should be talking to us and we, we will help you take it the, the next step. Excuse me, my name's Glenn. I'll be taking you through this today. Um, I've been involved in CAD for over 40 years now. So I started off with my own CAD management training consultancy business before joining the team here. Um, basically, I've been involved with every discipline of architecture, engineering, manufacturing, government that you could actually list. And that was more through uh, having my own business and sort of making sure I could help everybody, which meant that I picked up a lot of packages as well. So your AutoCADs, their opposition products such as MicroStation, but Revit, Inventor, and quite a number of the uh, tool sets or vertical products as well. So I'm here to take you through it today. Um, we will have questions at the end. So uh, we'll most probably get you to write into the chat for questions, but let's get into it. We're going to have a look at what's new in AutoCAD, what's new in LT, we're also going to have a look at the tool sets of mechanical, electrical, plant 3D, architecture, MEP, and map 3D. So it sounds like we're going to be here for days, but there's actually uh, not that much in the, the um, tool sets, but we'll, we'll have a look at what they've got under offering for us. So let's start off with AutoCAD and LT. Now, I'm only going to be using the full AutoCAD and I'll let you know what is and isn't in LT. Um, I did have LT on my machine, but I decided to take it off. I was having too many uh, login issues, having all of this software on, and LT seemed to be the guilty one, um, having it on my machine with the full AutoCAD and all the tool sets. So uh, I've decided to leave it off, but we will cover what you will and won't say. So in both AutoCAD and LT, so basically I'm using the icons in the top right corner to let you know what is or what it is that we're covering and what is in the product. So we've got new options um, to sort, to search drawings, okay? So what we might do is go and have a look at, whoops, sorry, go and have a look at AutoCAD and just see what we're talking about there. So if I go to the start screen, what we're talking about is, yes, we've got all our conventional stuff here, but we can sort by alphabetical order, when they were last opened. We can, you know, we've got our grid opening there, which we can sort by name or last opened as well. And of course, you've got all your search tools here, which can you know, display any files that uh, meet the requirement there. So they've made this interface a little bit nicer for us. Another thing they've done is uh, the Autodesk Docs Improvement. Now, one thing you need to be aware of, that on this tab, they've changed Docs to be Autodesk Projects, okay? So they've improved the support and performance when uh, viewing large files in Autodesk Docs. They've improved the desktop connect. So that's something in the background that you've got to download as a separate thing. And of course, you've got improved navigation on this start screen again. So let's go and have a look at AutoCAD and have a look at that. And we're talking about our Autodesk projects. So if you're using Autodesk Docs and the cloud technology, 
you know, you can come into here, you can come into your files, you can do your folders, you can sort them both this way. Okay, so um, let's get, just go down and have a look. So uh, plant 3D drawings, so piping. Yes, we can start seeing all of these quite nicely. Just suppose I don't open these at the moment. So we've got, this is an improved interface and performance. That's most probably the, the most important thing, you know, with the um, improved desktop connector. Okay. Next thing, and you can see this is all still happening with both full AutoCAD and LT, is we've got these file tab menus. So we can use these to switch between drawings, create or open drawings, save all drawings, or close all drawings. And there's a few other things in there. And on the layout tab, so when we go into drawings, we've got a similar sort of setup. So let's go into AutoCAD again and have a look at what we're talking about there. So at the top, we've got our layout tabs, but we've got this new layer tab button here where I can create new drawings, I can open drawings, I can save all the drawings that are there, or I can close them all. So this is saying you have to click one at a time to close them or come up here. It's now been made a lot easier, even with the save all as well. The other thing is, if you've got, which you don't have up at the moment, no. Nope. So just drawings, if you had multiple tabs, this is when this comes into its own, especially if you've got a lot, because you'll be able to see the tabs very quickly and easily in this list. And from here, we can start plucking the information in the status bar. So give your actual name of your file can be docked down in here. We can get into our page setup manager and we can create new layouts and get stuff from the templates. So they're all, of small but useful things that we're getting at the moment. Now, this one I'm saying is only in what I can. It's this drawing activity insights. And what it enables you to do is record the past actions that you and others have performed in regards to the drawings you're working in. Now, for this to work properly, we really need to set this up in a common area. So if you've got a team of people, and you're working on a server, you should set this up on the server. Otherwise, you're only going to see what you do to drawings. And I'm going to explain all this. I'm going to go into AutoCAD again. And let's open that one. Now, under our um, uh, Collaborate, that's uh, sorry, our View tab, we've got this Activity Insights. And you can see all these things I've been editing and I saved it the new drawing file. I've done some editing. I traced, I did a trace created table setup. So this is great. I can see everything that I've done. But if this was on the server and I needed to see what other people were doing, you really need to start setting up your authoring palette file location in a central location that you're all sharing. That way, everyone's information goes in there. And basically what is going in there is just a series of text files. So if you go and open these, I'll just double click on it and it should open it in Notepad. There we go. So you can see this information that is being stored and then recalled when we go into um, AutoCAD. So we've now got this tool, something a little bit, yeah, just more assistance in managing the files, really. Next thing we've got, now this is back in, now I should explain just going backwards. On this one, LT does have, which is quite a strange thing to do, they do have the option. So you can set them up so that under options, they're writing, sorry, writing everything to say it's drive or whatever, like everyone else. But what they don't have is the insights. They can't see what's going on, but people with full AutoCAD can see what they have done. So hopefully that makes it clear. So um, moving on, smart blocks. They've done a little bit of work with blocks. We've got um, a smart placement tool. 
which I'll, I'll show you working. So when you're bringing files in from your either your current drawing or recent or favorites, wherever, it will actually sort of select without you having to pick a base point and scale. It will do it all for you. So we're going to show you that. Now, in full AutoCAD, we've also got a replace capability. So not in LT. So the first tool, the placement, is in LT. The second one I'll show you, the replace, is not in LT. So let's go and have a look at this again. Oops, sorry, it didn't come up. All right. Let's just have a zoom into that area. All right. So if I just go to uh, insert, so I might just like I for insert, you get your regular sort of insert dialog box come up. Now, if I double click on any of those, as I come in, you can see as I'm moving around, it's coming up with suggestions where I could place this. Okay, and once I'm happy, I go, yep, yeah, that's where I want it. So this is this new sort of placement tool that we've got. Okay, some people go, oh, that's not a big deal, but hey, it lets you see things before you place it. It can be quite useful. So even down to, you know, bringing in your chairs and stuff, all those work the same. But what people are interested in is what happens if uh, I've got a whole series of different chairs and I need to start making them the same chair. Well, we've got this replace command. Remember, this is only in the full AutoCAD. So I can come through replace. I can pick one or more blocks. So let's try it out. Let's try a few blocks doesn't like it with different definitions. So there's something for you straight away, okay? So we pick the same definition and it's happy. So we can't pick different. And you can come along and select new blocks. I might pick that one. Now, do you want to redefine the block? Rename the incoming. I'm not going to redefine. I'm just going to bring it in and do a straight replace. There we go. So that one can work quite nicely. It might save some people with list routine. So you could come along if you wanted and use something like quick select and find a particular um, block reference by name. So you could find all your chair threes. Okay. Once you've got that done, you could use your replace. Then it goes, okay. Through your whole drawing with all of those, what you want to replace them with, and I'm going to go share four, and it updates all of them. So that's a nice little trick in there, but not in LP. All right, let's have a look at the next one, Markup Assist. Now, this is sort of a recent tool that they've done a bit of perfecting on. So um, we can actually pick on the text and it's recognized things like if I pick on this text that says remove, it will initiate the erase command. So we can pick on text and we can insert it as an M lead or an M text or update existing text. So why don't we just go and have a play around with that one and have a look what we're being offered there. So I'm just going to go into this drawing. Let's close this. Now, if I come into collaborate, I've already got, as I can see, a trace in there. So just double click on it to initiate it. And you can see I've got this trace in there with you know, a few markups here and there. I've got, you know, remove all of the stuff in here. So to be able to work on these, the first thing you've got to do is send the trace to the back. Now, the other thing is I know, and this is what you've got to be aware of, where the text and everything is. Everything's in model space, so I've just double clicked into the viewport. Otherwise, this wouldn't work. Now, if I pick on that, it's a text. I've crossed out some text. So I want to replace existing text. It says select the text you want to replace, which is that. Now select the marking text, which is that. And it goes, okay, I'm going to put heritage in. All right, and it's replaced it. So now we're starting to get some really neat tools in here. Let's go and have a look in here. It says remove. So I come in and I go, okay, well, let's pick on that. Oh, sorry. Let's pick on, <laughs> let's pick on our remove. 
that. And it decided it's not going to kick on the remove now. Let's just see what that's doing. There we go. Initiated the erase command. So I could just go, well, erase all of that. You see, as you complete the task, it grays them out. So we've even got things like, oh, it's got move. So let's pick on move, initiates the move command. And I could come along and say, well, it wants to move all of these. So I'm just going to grab those. It just lets you interact really better with the, um, the markup. So I could say, look, let's just move all of those. Let's make sure my auto is on. Let's just move all of those along there. All right. So you can see we've got quite a, a few things going on there. Let's go and have a look at this. Again, you can see everything in model space. So what I did, just zoom in. And I've just lost. This is always, only, it's ever going to go right, going to go wrong now, isn't it? <laughs> Let's just go out of it, back in. Okay, we've got um, a PDF there. And somebody's written a note in the PDF in regards to this. So I might say I'm going to update some existing text. I'm going to update that and I'm going to append it. And done, it's added that text to the other text and you've got a similar thing there. So you can see the way the markup is working. It's just not, it's not just marking up. You can pick on this and if people have written stuff like move, erase, copy, it will actually understand those pieces of text and initiate that command. So uh, quite a useful thing to be able to add. Um, okay. So let's mark up as this. And that's all I care. All right, let's go and have a look at the traces update. So what we've got now is a new command called copy from trace that basically if somebody's done a trace markup, I can copy that stuff into AutoCAD. If you're not using any of these tools, perhaps it's something that's worth having a look at. So let's come to my file here. Let's come to my traces palette. So I've got one already set up. If somebody's done this as a markup, so they've used um, it could be in the online AutoCAD or something like that. And they've gone and done this. Now we've actually got uh, a command called copy from trace. Okay. Excuse me, which is also under the collaborate. I think that's only place we can do it. I think we can only type it there. Or when we go to put this to back, check all your settings. Yeah. Let's do a copy from trace. And basically, you've got to be always sending it to the back. Do the copy from trace. You can pick the items in the trace. And now, if I get rid of it, I've actually copied that information straight into the drawing. So that is going to save you time. If people have done accurate um, trace markups using blocks and things like that, you can just copy it straight down. And that's basically the main things that have come in AutoCAD and some of those in LT. But perhaps the biggest one that's excited most people is the fact that we've now got auto list in LT. Now, if we go and have a look at, just going to get some information here. So 
So if we go and have a look at this help area, just drag that over. It gives you all the information about what you're going to find, how you do it. So if you've not done auto list before, you can now start experimenting with it. Um, what else do I want to have a look at? Customization guide. So you can see all of this is starting to get into a lot of information about what you can and can't find in there. There is also in the help a little bit of information about what is not included in LT. Now, just to give you an idea, I ran, oh, I think about 20, 30 list routines in LT that I had. Some of them had dialogue boxes for like uh, setting up your drawing sheets. So you'd come along, the dialogue box would appear, you pick the client, you pick the size sheet, you hit insert, and then goes the drawing sheet. All of this was working inside LT2. So I was very impressed with what I found did work. So if you've got a site with a mix of AutoCADs that have got AutoList, and you've got some people with LT, you can now give them access to those auto list routines. It's only going to be in some of the real high end stuff that you might hit some restrictions. But generally, I was very impressed with the uh, capabilities of AutoCAD LT. Now, some people have said, oh, so would you get rid of AutoCAD now and just change over to LT because it's cheaper? It's like, no way, no, would I do that? So, AutoCAD offers hell of a lot more than just, you know, if you're talking about auto list, you've also got to remember you get all the tool sets or vertical products with AutoCAD as well. So uh, for me, I would not be jumping across. So while we're talking about that, what additional enhancements have we got? Um, in both AutoCAD and LT, they've got this new PDF SHX system variable. So if you set this to two, it will store text objects that use the SHX font. So if you're still using the SHX font, um, they'll store them in and you'll be able to make them selectable in PDF searching and stuff like that, which we couldn't do previously. <coughs> There's also enhancements to the 2D graphics and to the 3D graphics. So the 3D graphics, of course, does not include LP. So this is all for AutoCAD. Basically, everything is improving with the speed, the reliability, and all that in regards to graphics. Okay. <laughs> Summary of the new command. And this is just to give you an idea as well. So all of that activity uh, insights, you can see everything's in AutoCAD but there's still a lot of things not in LT. They got the copy trace, but things like the fade markups, you know, when you're doing all the markup stuff, that's not included in LT. Um, the variables, of course, if it works in AutoCAD, you're going to have all the variables. If it's not happening in LT, you're not going to have the variables. So it's just showing you just in this release, there is still a large difference between the products just on the tools that we've got recently. Now, the big thing is, don't forget, if you need to go and research, go into the help, whether you're using AutoCAD or LT. So this is both there. And go and have a look at the new features. Um, Autodesk have done a lot of uh, videos that come with the help files, which show you all of the new tools in there as well. Right. That pretty well brings us to the end of AutoCAD and LT. Now what we're going to look at is the tool sets. So all of those additional products that you can access if you've got your AutoCAD, full AutoCAD license through subscription. So we're talking about mechanical, electrical, plant 3D, architectural, MEP, and map 3D. Now, what I'm going to do immediately is just close down AutoCAD. So let's use the new tool. I'm going to close all of those. No, I'm not going to say these. And the first product that we're going to go and have a look at 
it's mechanical. So give me a minute while I just go and get mechanical. So let's open that up. Now, I don't know how many of you use this, but uh, if you don't, it might be worth sort of you know, having a look at these anyway, so you get a better understanding of what comes with these products. Now, remember, what I'm going to show you right now is just what is new. So they've done a revision update. But, uh, uh, what we're talking about there, let me just get something else open here. Okay. So what we're talking about in the mechanical for the section view is, and, and, and this really comes down to get into all your mechanical stuff. The section view symbol has been updated to support Y14.3 2012. So it's replaced the 20, uh, 2003. You will still find the 2003 in there if you're using this tool, but um, it's just, yeah, that's what they've changed it to. So they're, they're working on updating all of these all of the time. So let's just go through and I'll go and open the drawing here. And I'm going to have a look at this AM1. So what we're talking about is if I come through, let me just change my workspaces so we can see what's going on there. So what you find now with the, uh, we've got this mechanical interface on, so we've got more tools available to us. So things like come through home on the details, so we've got things like section marks and all things like that. If you've never seen these, they're, they're well worth looking at. But let's just go and check my options for this drawing. And what we're looking at, here I've got the ANSI standard, which is the standard that's had this update. And basically I can come through and say, look, what I'm going to do is uh, put my section lines through here. Okay, and I want to place that. There. Okay. You've got all of these sort of nice little tools, but these are now up to a new standard. All right, another thing that they've done in uh, stuff here is they've done a revision update, update to the taper and slope. So you know, if you're doing you know, shafts and things like that, they actually updated all of this. So we've got under the ISO standard, they've gone to ISO 3040, they've now come up to the 2016, whereas they used to have the 2009. So they are looking at standards and keeping them up to date. So what are we talking about there? Well, let's just go and open a drawing, not that one. Let's go and open a drawing. There we go. So what are we talking about here? Well, under the um, notations, we've got specific notation for mechanical. So I can come through and say, look, I want to put a taper and slope on this one. Oops, sorry, taper and slope. So pick the center line. Yep, yeah, that's the taper and slope. And I want to place it here. Okay, and it comes up with your taper and slope. So this is um, probably interactive. So you, know, you can come through on these. Uh, it's all basically picking on that center line. We can come and edit that. And if we come through to uh, um, edit and say, look, I need to edit this component here. I can do things like, well, what's the, Let's go into the dialogue so we can see it. So what's the diameter one? What's the diameter two? And what's the length? Well, I might change the length to 20. Okay. 
and close update and it updates all of this so it's very interactive and understands what is going on so you know we've got some very nice things in there another thing with mechanical so mechanical actually got a few a few things is um similar to doing doing the markup i can bring a markup in and instead of using the autocad notes we can use the intelligent uh, autocad mechanical markup notes so let's go and have a look at that one so i want to open the drawing that one lived in here from previously or not so i'm going to collaborate check if i've got any traces yes i have so let's just initiate that one and what i can do here is of course send it to the back i can come in pick on that it recognizes the text and i can insert it as an em note so this is an autocad mechanical note so i want to attach it to this item um accept that and i'm going to bring it out to there so this is an intelligent autocad mechanical note but see again how even with handwritten i don't know how bad the handwriting has got to be before it goes i i don't understand it i'm going to start making mistakes but it's it's pretty good so that was a, another tool that we got there excuse me so still staying with mechanical we got uh, if you use the js jis we've got some enhancements done to that so jis 1602 has been withdrawn and 1603 is yeah replacing it so yeah that's just another tool we've got in there uh, some important notes in mechanical 2023 and earlier the drawing contains a large number of view sections and detail styles which are things we would create in mechanical you couldn't clean them up so if you got rid of them they stayed there so they've now fixed it up so purge addresses this and now we'll clean those up and you'll get your performance back in mechanical so as usual have a look at the mechanical help for all the new tools that are in there okay so um, of course you're also going to get all the new tools that come with autocad being listed as well because mechanical sits on top of autocad so the next thing we're going to look at is so let me just get into here no let's close all of these we're actually going to have a look at um architectural and MEP. So these two, as far as we're concerned, aren't really being separated. Um, do, let's just get through there. All right, you can't have all of these running in the background, so let's get AutoCAD uh, architecture running. Now, what we're doing on this one is we're going to have a look at the new tools that came with that so anyone that's using this will be pleased to know straight off the first thing they did was they improved the way the cui the tool palettes and templates migrate from previous releases prior to that you'd use the migrate tool and they weren't coming across properly so this is for both architecture and mep they've now got this working so that's a, a big bonus. Another one is uh, they've got a new 3D printing command that allows you to select what goes in and what doesn't go in. I can do it by layer, selecting objects and all of that. And it basically replaces the old 3D print command. So if I was to go and have a look inside um, AutoCAD, it's just no, I'll just even with multiple screens, this becomes a trying to click around all of this. So what we're looking at now is let's go and open a drawing. So I've got this one. And just so you know, this has been done in AutoCAD architecture. So it's actually 3D. So 
and a lot more intelligent than what AutoCAD is. So, yeah, we've now got that. And if we go and have a look at our AET 3D print command, you can actually select entities in that that you want. So I know to pick them all, or you can pick them by layer. So it's got a nice sort of little interface there. You can see what you have picked. You know, you can come through here, you can do quick select. So that means you can do it by layers and all stuff like that. So it's just a small improvement, but it's a nice one that's been uh, added in there. Okay, another one that we will see, which I think is most probably, yeah. Uh, it's American, that's the problem. <laughs> so what it is, they've, they've included more uh, blocks in just the um, uh, design center. So if I was to come to AutoCAD now, AutoCAD Architecture now, and initiate uh, something like Design Center, which I'm now looking for, where I am. Here we go. <laughs> so they've given us all of these. So we've got heaps and heaps of extra stuff that we never had before. So again, it is, um, they're all set up for architecture. They are properly created uh, 3D components that are sitting in there. So uh, if you're using this, you've now at least got a bigger library than what you used to have coming out of the box. So again, nice bonus. All right, um, what else are we looking at here? Important note, this one doesn't seem it's yeah, some of them they say, oh, look, we've done this improvement. It's like, no, it's a fix. <laughs> so in Architecture and MEP, uh, every time you pick dynamic blocks, Content Center would close, which was annoying because you try to use it. You've got to keep opening it up. It's now fixed. It stays open until you decide that you want to close it. Again, if you're using these products, if you've got um, Architecture, or if you've got MEP, go to the relevant help and find out what is new. Have a look at the videos, have a look at the, uh, work through the little explanations that they've got to help learn them. All right, next one off the rank, AutoCAD Electrical. So let me go and find AutoCAD Electrical. All right, that's starting in the background. So let's come back into here. And let's go and have a look at that now. So what we're talking about is a new graphical schematic symbol table. Yeah, it sounds impressive. And it's actually a nice little tool that they've included. So what we've got here is this. So it's like a legend all of the uh, symbols that you've used in your electrical layout. The thing is, if you're familiar with um, AutoCAD Electrical, we can actually use the surf tool on any of these to go and locate them. So let's go into one here. I'll just go and open a schematic drawing. Now I'm gonna cut this off the side because I won't have enough room uh, to do this. So uh, I'll just come over here. Now, what we're talking about here is if you come into your reports for your schematics, what I have now got as a choice is this symbol list. We never had that before. So I can do it for every project. I can come in here. I can set my sorting order, how I want them to come out. I can change the report field. So I'm just going to have blocks sub quantities and tag names. I'm not going to bother with anything else. And you can even have um, this little thing here. Let me just see if I can get into that quickly. Just go to that. 
file. And what it is, I can actually change block names if I want, or the symbol names to have descriptions. So that was that extra little file here. You can go in and browse for that. You can edit that and change that to how you want. So I'm going to do the project. I'm going to do all the schematic drawings. OK. So it's now opening all of these drawings, getting out all the information, and it's come back with all of this saying, well, I found all of these in your um, in your project. So this is every single block or symbol that we could have possibly used. OK, now I can come in here and I can say, let's put that on the drawing. And you can determine, yeah, are you doing all the symbols? Which symbols are you doing? Have you got an X, Y coordinate you're going to pick it at? Do you want to put it on a particular layer? I'm just going to hit OK and I'll drop that in there. And it goes through and gives me a, it's like a block count in a way. It shows me all of the symbols that I've got in this project. Now, I did mention this surfing. Now, if you're familiar with AutoCAD Electrical, what I can do is I can come through to any of these and basically surf these tools out. Okay. So um, it's quite a nice ability. So I can go through and find out where they are all over the job. So another thing, let's just, there's different ways you could have inserted that uh, format. So again, symbol list. OK. What we might do is just do this one drawing that I'm currently in. So I'll just process that one. Instead of doing the whole project, I just want to know what's in this part. So you've got a choice here between when you put it on the drawing, Insert as a text table. You can select your desired text table and you can just drop it in like that. Okay. Or you can do it with all of the symbols I showed you before. Okay. So we won't go through that one again, but that's one of the AutoCAD electrical improvements. Another one they've done is wire synchronization. Now, we used to be able to change wires and then you had to follow that wire through the whole project and make sure you're updating it everywhere. Whereas we've now got an automated system. As long as you change the source wire, the destination wires will change. So let's come back to this one. I'll just get rid of that. Now, what I can see here is that one there. You know, you come down to these and you know, you can go to wherever this is. So, you, know, you can surf to wherever that is and it will go and do well. Yeah, it's, it's in this location. So go to it and it goes to it. As it just so happens, it's on the same file. <laughs> but if I was to come through and grab this wire and change it, and let's change it to a white wire, hit enter updates and then detects that hey do you want to go through and match this through the whole project so yeah you can go through there and say look go and do the update and you can see it's gone and done the update for us so when you've got you know sort of a wire going across three or four drawings we just have to go and follow it through which well, now it'll automatically go through the whole thing and do the update for you so yeah Small, small one, but a very, very good one for electrical users. Another thing that we got in electrical was small catalog content. Now, basically, the Siemens AG, so these tools here, and the Schneider Electric, these ones here, we kept getting them as um, topics for uh, AutoCAD Electrical 22 and 23. They've now included them in the base product. So we don't have to go searching for those as an extra install. They actually come in with a base product. 
Okay, now a few things. So some improvements or fixes that they've done in 2024 electrical. Um, we can now snap when we're doing our terminal to X, Y, and Z. We never used to be able to do Z. Um, again, there's no constraints on that Z. So all of these terminal strips and terminals that we're working with work well. Also, it fixed the problems with errors showing that every time you did a rebuild of any large project having more than 400 drawings, that's all been fixed. So on your large projects, it works. Um, the application will not crash during refresh on the location view tab. If you ever had that location view tab open, you did a refresh, it would quite often crash. Fixed. And the big one is this MS access not found error. Fix that. We used to, on the support desk, we got this a lot and we had to take people through quite a few steps and it was a little bit of mucking around to fix it. It's now fixed in 2024, so you won't see that error come up anymore, which is a relief. All right. Our next thing is go to your help. You're going to see all of that stuff that I've discussed again here. All right. We're going to have a look at plant 3D. So uh, let's close this one. Just escape that and go and get. So I'll close that. Don't want that one. Plant 3D. All right. Let's go and have a look at what we're dealing with here. Swap these over. All right. Um, one of the first things we've got is the table setups. So what they've done here, they've just made it a lot easier. When we're doing a bill of materials on our ortho drawings, they've given us a lot more in the tables, whereas before we only had one and we had to edit it and braid it all. They've now separated out all of these to make it um, a lot nicer to get to. So, hello, that's how I did that one. Let's just come back here. Right, let's go and have a look at plant 3D. So, let's go and get a demo project here. Let's just go and have a look. I've got some auto drawings already created sitting there. So let's go and have a look at that. This one's just got a plain view on it. Right, so what we're talking about here is on your cable placements and things like that, um, you've got your cable setups you've got now. Have a look at this. We've got it for piping, equipment, nozzles, steel, spool. And all of these can be customized how, how you want. You can manage these components, you can add columns, you can do whatever you want. So now when you're picking these, the pie comes say, look, I want to do a bill of material on that viewport. Let's do it. Let's just try squeezing that one up there, see how it goes. So this is a piping one. Ooh, that's gone wrong, but it's just gone and grabbed all of that information with all the quantities and that for all my pipe related stuff. Okay, so you can come up and set any table as being active. So I might come through and say, Look, I'm going to do the equipment. So now when I come through and I do a bit of materials on that, uh, nope, I don't want to update that one. So that should give me. Let's just try, yes. Okay. All right. So we can delete those, put those in, whatever we want. But that has just minimized the work for people using Plant 3D drastically. Um, another thing that we got in there was, I don't know why that sat there, that should have been up in that corner. What we're seeing in our pipe spec viewer, 
um, we can also see down here. So let's just go and grab a few things here. Sure, I don't. If you've got your pipes back. So everything to do with the pipes, but we used to have to come in here and sort it all out. Whereas now, if we go and have a look back in um, plant 3D, let's just come back to our source files. Let's go and have a look at maybe our 3D model of our piping. So when you're doing all your work in here now, what you've got is um, your pipe back. So what we're talking about is all of the stuff in here. Yeah, anything on that, yeah, we can show in the spec viewer, which is this, which is really that whole interface of what we're seeing in here. So, and we can do all the appropriate editing while we're in plant 3D. So we don't have to keep coming out to the spec editor. We can do our manipulation of the specification from inside plant 3D. So that's definitely a nice tool. Uh, another one that we've got here. We just go and swap back there. Right. So what we're talking about now is um we've done that one in our catalogue. So what's happening now with the catalog and spec editors, we can actually do um, the same sort of editing that we were never able to do in the past. So again, let's just get out of here. So what we're talking about there is, if I'm in the spec, I can get into the property editor for anything, and I can do all the editing for it. Whereas now, if I go to the catalog editor, I can get into the property editor again and do it. So we used to have to sort of flick between the spec editor and the catalog editor, whereas now I can get to the properties of anything that I'm working on from inside both the spec and the catalog editor. All right. Um, another one we need to look at. Yes, the plant actually, you know, compared to a lot of the verticals, plant did very well. Um, what we got is this capability of in our auto drawings, changing some of the pipes or all of the pipes, it depends what you want to be able to do here, to being single line. So what I'm talking about there is back in plant 3D. Here we go, let's just get rid of that a minute. So if I zoom in, you can see all my pipe work is shown as yeah, like a view on top of the model. Um, but what we want to do here is on your auto view, so we've got under our auto view, we can do a single line piping. So let's just come in here. Oh, that's the wrong button. I don't want to be here. That's to do with all the setups. I'm not in trucks again. Sorry. <laughs> so with any of these, you can come through. So on your auto view, what you are able to do is come through, and we've actually got this single line piping. So I can come through there and Select an orthographic view, so it's this view. Now, do you want to do it by line number? Yep, I want to do it by line number, and I can actually pick the lines that I want to change to be a single line. And update. What it does, it will change. So if you're trying to sort of highlight some of the lines in particular, 
you can make the other single line. Or if you're trying to produce just a single line drawing, you can use this. Okay, so it depends how you want to use that tool. All right, big one, Plant 3D. What's new? Go and have a look at the help. You know, we'll keep pushing you back there. Map 3D, I'm not going to actually start the product. <laughs> what happened here, they've done some coordinate system updates. They've added uh, this snake grid EWR, which is for the UK, and NAD83, which is for Canada. No, really not anything that, unless you are working in the UK or in Canada on projects, you're not going to get any benefit with any of the new tools except what came with AutoCAD for Mac 3D. All right, we're most probably at that stage now where if anyone has got any questions, um, I'm not sure if you've got access to the chat or not. Maybe you don't. All right. Um, has anyone got any questions? Are you able? I suppose my question is: Are you able to add, ask any questions? I can't see that you've got access to the chat. It's not looking like it. Okay. Well, I suppose being fair, um, we've sort of shown you everything that is available. It's a case of going starting up the products having a look at the um, helps and seeing what's there we pretty well guided you towards everything the other thing is if any of you have sort of seen stuff and said look we do plant we do pin id drawings we do 3d piping or we do electrical schematics or we do um, mechanical components if you want to see these just contact your um, a2k business development manager and they'll arrange a demo. We can show you what the product is. For many of you that have got subscriptions through Autodesk and you've got your AutoCAD under subscription, you will find that you've already got these vertical products. I suppose what I could show you there is just to let you know if you want to check. If you go to your manage.autodesk.com, you'll be able to see what products you actually do have. Excuse me. Now, mine is actually ridiculous. I've got access to absolutely everything. I just don't know why it's taking so long. Now, if I go to my all products and services, what you will find, the, if you've got AutoCAD, you will have access to downloading this architecture, electrical, MEP, raster design, Plant 3D, mechanical plant 3D. Okay. Anyone that's using raster design, nothing new in that at all. We haven't seen any new tools in that for years. That's why I didn't cover it at all. But that's where you'll find the product. So if you log in and you can get to them, then you've got access to them. Or if you're in a large company, you might have to talk to whoever looks after all of your run CAD products and see what you do actually have access to. All right, well, that's it for today. That is uh, basically what's new in 2024. You saw there was a few sort of things that apply to AutoCAD. The exciting thing for LT is they've got AutoLisp. And for the people in the verticals, you can see most of the verticals, except for Mac 3D, seem to get a few tools there on top of what comes with AutoCAD. So, um, if you're looking for other events, and we've got them going all the time, go to our nz.vinzero.com slash events to see what other webinars are coming up. So I'd just like to close and thank you all for uh, coming today. Hopefully you've all got something out of it and uh, you might be tempted to go up to or to upgrade to 2024 to take advantage of some of the new tools. So until next time. Thank you and goodbye.